Hey everyone, you know, every single day that goes by is another day closer to the end times, to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do you know what exactly will happen? What, how, when and why? In some of my other videos, we already talked about the signs of the end times, the tribulation, and also Israel and the end times. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the end times when Jesus comes the second time. It's going to be a very interesting video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the video. All right, now the Bible is very clear. Jesus Christ will come a second time. Now, of course, we don't know everything that will happen because we can only know what God decided to reveal to us in Scripture. So in this video, I want to share with you seven facts of things that we do know about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's start with the first one. No one will know the time or date. There's been a lot of people who say, oh, it will happen this date. Oh, it will happen this date. Don't believe it. Even if it's a prophet that's famous, it doesn't matter. Even if it's an angel, because we know that even the devil can make himself look like an angel of light just to mislead you. The Bible is very clear. Jesus himself said in Matthew 24 verse 44, Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And verse 50 says, the master of the servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know. Then Matthew 25 verse 13 says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And Luke 12 verse 40 says, You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. No one will know exactly when this will happen, but there are certain signs that shows us it is close. Just like there are signs for a woman when she's about to give birth. We already discussed some of these signs in another video, but let me just quickly mention some of them. False prophets working signs and wonders. Mark 13 verse 22. The Great Tribulation. Matthew 24 verse 15. The preaching of the gospel to all nations. Matthew 24 verse 14. Great signs in heaven. Matthew 24 verse 29. The coming of the beast, the Antichrist, 1 John 2 verse 18. And then of course, the salvation of Israel. If you want to learn more about this, then you can watch my other video after this one. Let's move on to number two. Everyone on earth will see Jesus. It's going to be sudden, it's going to be visible, and it's going to be personal. Revelation 1 verse 7 says, Behold, He is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see Him. Even those who pierced Him and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of Him. We will see Jesus Himself. It won't be a spiritual return where Jesus lives in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. No, we will really physically see Him the same way the disciples saw Him leave. Acts 1 verse 10, And while they were gazing into heaven as He went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw Him go into heaven. So, everyone will see Jesus. But just so you understand this a little bit better. Just before the tribulation, the rapture will take place. Jesus will bring us up to where He is in the air. Harpazo, in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 says, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up. Caught up in the Greek is harpazo. Together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. But then the tribulation will start and the world will be pure evil. Murder, theft, rape. The list just goes on. There will be lawlessness because the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, will rule the world. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 says, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship. 
so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. This will truly be a terrible, evil time on earth. People will just do whatever their evil, sinful hearts desire. And that is why Jesus will come and stop it. And he will come with his second coming and he will stand with his feet on the Mount of Olives. Zechariah 14 verse 4 says, On that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall move northward and the other half southward. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azal. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. That is us. And verse 9 says, And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day the Lord will be one and his name one. On this day, Jesus will bring judgment on the earth, on all the evil, which takes us to number three. Jesus will come and bring judgment on all unbelievers. The first time he came, he came peaceful. He came to fulfill all the Old Testament prophecies about himself, the Messiah. And now at the second coming, he will come to fulfill all the prophecies of his second coming. The first time he came, he came to bring light into the world, even though so many people decided to stay in darkness. John 12 verse 46, I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. You know, even in movies, TV series, there's always this fight between light and dark, good and evil. Jesus is the light of the world and he came to bring us spiritual life. Jesus says in John 10 verse 10, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The first time He came to earth, He came to die for our sins on the cross, in our place. Why? Because He loves us. He didn't force us to accept Him. He gave us all free choice. God is not an evil God that forces people to do things like a robot. He loves us. And you all know, John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now listen to this. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. But now, the second time, He will come to judge all unbelievers. And it won't be pretty. Because He is holy and righteous, He gave all human beings time and grace to come to Him, to turn from the darkness to the light. But a lot of people decided not to. They wanted to stay in the darkness. They wanted to live in sin. Killing, stealing, lying, bribing, raping, and the list goes on. And that's going to continue until the second coming of Jesus. And this is what will happen. Revelation 19 verse 11. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, with which to strike down the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If God is truly holy and if He is truly righteous, then He will hate all evil, all unrighteousness. And just like an earthly judge should be just and punish evil acts, people who disobey the law, Jesus will also judge the unrighteous, but He will do it better 
because only He is truly righteous. He is perfect. Revelation 22 verse 12 says, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what He has done. Jesus will come and stop the beast and the Antichrist. I talked about this already in another video where I talked about the tribulation. But it will be a terrible time. Lawlessness, people killing, stealing, raping, just doing whatever their sinful hearts desire. Thank God that He will come and stop it all. At the second coming of Jesus, He will stop the Antichrist, the beast and all of the people who follow them. Revelation 19 verse 19 And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. And the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse. And all the birds were gorged with their flesh. The first time Jesus came, he came as a baby to suffer on the cross. But now the second time he comes, he will come as king, ready for war. We call this battle the battle of Armageddon. And God will win, of course, because He is almighty. The beast, the Antichrist, those who follow Him, they stand no chance. Revelation 16 verse 12 says, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Ephrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. And they assemble them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. God is victorious and right after the battle, he establishes His reign on earth. Zechariah 14 verse 9 And the Lord will be King over all the earth. Now the Millennium Kingdom will start. Right after God is victorious, He will reign on earth for 1000 years. The Millennium Kingdom. Revelation 20 verse 4 Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with Him for a thousand years. During this time the devil is bound, and he cannot do anything to anyone for a thousand years. Revelation 20 verse 1 Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the pit, and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Now there will also be judgment for the people after the tribulation, those who were still alive. It is called the judgment of the nations, or the judgment of the sheep and the goats. Matthew 25 verse 31 When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will place the sheep on His right, 
but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Verse 41, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The final battle. After the millennium, the kingdom reign, the devil will be set free and he will have a final battle with God. God will be victorious, of course, without any effort because he is God Almighty. And then Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever with all the people who followed him, with all the people who chose to stay in darkness. Revelation 20 verse 7. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. God will make an end to all evil. He will bring His judgment on all unrighteousness, the devil, any kind of form of... It. You know, people sometimes wonder, what is wrong with this world? Evil is what's wrong with this world, sin. And so God will make an end to it all. The Bible is full of these prophecies. Even in Malachi 4 verse 1, it says, for behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Now after this final battle, the big judgment day will start and God will judge all the unbelievers on His white throne. Revelation 20 verse 11 Then I saw a great white throne and Him who was seated on it. From His presence earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The new heaven and the new earth. Finally, God will create the new heaven and the new earth. And all of us, children of God, will live with Him forever and ever. There will be no more sadness, no more tears. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be His people. And God Himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away." Wow, that's just amazing. You can continue to read that in your own time. The new heaven and the new earth is going to be amazing. And I'm ready for it. How about you? Are you ready for it? Are you sure that your name is written in the book of life? If you are not sure, then you still have time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't waste the time of grace that God has given you. He's knocking on your door 
is waiting for you to answer Him. God says in Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. My hope is that you choose God today. Don't wait for three days from now, two days, tomorrow. Don't wait even just a minute. You don't even know what's going to happen. Choose Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. Turn away from your sin, turn away from the darkness and turn to the light, to Jesus Christ. It is only He that can save you because He is the truth, the way and the life. Turn to Him and He will open your spiritual eyes to see the truth and He will give you new spiritual life. You will become a new creation, a child of God. And if you want to know what it's, what it's going to be like to live with Christ in a new heaven, a new earth, and watch this video here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life in